The political establishment has brought about the destruction of our factories and our jobs as they flee to Mexico, China, and other countries all around the world. It's a global power structure that is responsible for the economic decisions that have robbed our working class, stripped our country of its wealth, and put that money into the pockets of a handful of large corporations and political entities. The only thing that can stop this corrupt machine is you. So, you know, that offended a lot of people during the campaign. They saw, thought it was anti-Semitic. I did not see that, but I trust those who said it was. But the thing that I saw, Howard Dean, when I saw that, and they're talking about you know, Goldman Sachs and the big Howard banks Thier. and Howard Dean, all this, I was saying, I, I actually <laughs> dress I, I saw it and I actually tweeted immediately, this will help Republicans in the future, you know, in states like Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, it'll get working class voters out. They don't trust Wall Street. They don't trust the international finance system that they feel is running around. So there you go. And it did. But then this morning, we're looking at Steve Mnuchin and Wilbert Ross and all these guys that are, you know, billionaires. And I just wonder how do you get the reforms through a Republican Congress that's going to be resistant in the first place if those are your economic guys that are pushing it? Well, I, first of all, I think he gets a pass for a while. Um, I think the American people have just been through two years of a horrible campaign, and I, he can get away with a lot right now, so I don't think he's going to get it's the same stuff with all the conflict of interest business. It needs to be aired. He's going to have to do something about it eventually. Right now, people are just saying, okay, let's give this guy a chance to put his cabinet together. So I don't think you're going to see anything about this. When it starts to go south for other reasons, right. this is going to be a big issue. But it, I don't think it is now. So does he have, from all you know, um, you know a little bit about Wall Street, does Mnuchin have what it takes to calm the waters when the Dow's down 20%? Because the buzz really I've heard question. from Wall Street is... He doesn't. That he That's a not great question. Level. I've thought about this a lot um, uh, just over the years about what a Treasury Secretary needs to be. George W. Bush had two secretaries who were very good business people and failed in the job, Paul O'Neill and John Snow, who right. were outside Wall Street. And it seems to me that the real job of the Secretary is to calm the financial markets when there's a major problem and to bring some sort of reasonable I know I'll approach. offend a lot of Democrats when I say this and Republicans, but Robert Rubin. If Robert Rubin picked up the phone and said, Calm down. This is what's going to happen. You know what? Whoever's running Goldman Sachs at the time or J.P. Morgan. That's listen. exactly right. And so the question is, now Mnuchin's from that world. I don't know him. I have read that he's not the heavy hitter that Hank Paulson was. And you can say a lot of bad things about Hank Paulson, but Hank Paulson was one of the people who kept the show together while the country and the world right. was falling apart. Um, so, I, does he have that kind of gravitas? Not yet. Let's see what happens when he gets mm. there. Hank Paulson is that guy, too. I mean, he, in 2008, yeah. he could get all the people That's from right. Wall Street, all the heads of the banks That's in right. the room, and they'd sit and say, and you got to do this. And, 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 and this Jamie Dimon just... says, I'm not going to do it. And Hank Paulson goes, yes, you are. Right. <laughs> and Jamie Dimon goes, right. This is going to be our right. third <laughs> Goldman Sachs Secretary of the Treasury in what, 10 years? Okay. It's kind of amazing, actually, when you think about it. It is amazing. Wow. One company. And by the way, Willie and I have been on the record since 2007. If anybody at Goldman Sachs wants to hire us, we are oh always available. God. I could be there by 8 o'clock. Okay. Eight okay. okay. If, if you only have one the position, position I could be there by you Thank you. About God. the future <laughs> of the American Center, and David writes this, instead of just R's and D's, there will be a Trump-dominated populist nationalism, a more libertarian freedom caucus, a Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren progressive caucus. A Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Democratic old guard. The Trump-Sanders era is going to create new opposition <coughs> blocks filled with people who never thought they would be working together. There is a raging need for a movement that embraces economic dynamism, global engagement, and social support that is part Milton Friedman on economic policy, Ronald Reagan on foreign policy, and Franklin Roosevelt on welfare policy. The new center will probably start as a legislative caucus with members of both parties. Where it goes from there is anybody's guess. I don't agree. It's already here. And the problem really? is none of them are interested in politics. It's the, it's the first global generation. 
first millennials. Yeah, I call them the first globals yeah. because they are yeah. the first globals. They are, and they believe in all of this. They're libertarian economically. I think right. they're interested they're deep, in politics. Uh, they were all over Bernie Sanders. They, they really were. They were, and that was and, great. But and look at you and me. But that and that was wonderful. But look at the turnout. Yeah, but it's because it was Hillary. But I'm that's sorry. because they rigged it for, Dem for Dem Hillary, and Bernie never got a chance. You really well, can't I say that. Well, quite go that far. Oh no, right that's what happened. Well, Read I, yeah, the I emails. Don't, I don't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, hold on. Let's not. Let's Twist not recap. All right, we were, let's not relitigate that. Let's not relitigate um, that stuff. Sorry, I'm not holding please. any grudges. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so okay, so let you. so let, I, I actually I, I, I agree with with Howard uh, Mark Halprin. I also know though that there's been this strain before where I know when we got there in '94 we would walk into a room and be shocked when we were sitting there with sort of thought, supposedly hard right wing guys and the ACLU. And whether it was expanded wiretapping that we were fighting or whether it was a Mexican bailout that we were fired, fighting that was actually a Goldman Sachs bailout, there were all these very interesting sort of cross currents, which have been kind of wiped away by the, the Bush, the eight Bush years and the eight Obama years. But Howard's got a point, doesn't he? I, and, and David Brooks, we're going to see yeah. a lot of interesting alliances moving forward. Look, there's obviously a lot of focus now on the personalities and the symbolism of these appointments. In the end, <clears throat> this administration will be judged and should be judged by, do they create new jobs that pay well in the new economy? A lot of the people they're bringing in right. yep. are old, old economy people. They're yes. people who know about manufacturing, which has got to be a part of the mix for sure. But the question is, do they have these alliances that create health care opportunities that in a new way that Republicans want to do jobs that go that stay in this country or new jobs that get created that's that's how they'll be judged and how they should be judged as I said and the question is when they come up against Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell and the old ways Republicans thought about the economy do they find a way to compromise and does that often include as I think it can and will Democrats on things like infrastructure and tax reform that's, which is where yeah. they're going to start it's a great great point Nick you know everything outside of jobs really and creating new jobs in in the age of globalization everything outside of that that we all chattered about the politicians chattered about it was sound and fury signifying nothing well climate change mm. matters a lot okay but i'm going back to right. the same four states mm -hmm. wisconsin michigan ohio Pennsylvania. You stand up and you deliver and you figure out how to start creating new jobs mm -hmm. in our new economy or you lose, right? Look, if you can do that in those four states, I'll be a two-term president. Um, the problem is it's hard to bring factory jobs back to those states. It's not just outsourcing, it's automation. It, yeah, it's, right? it's, it's in it's some many very cases hard to bring impossible. those jobs back uh, at the scale they used to be there. So the question is, how do you bring those new here, jobs? Though? To the Rust Belt. Thousand jobs? How about Carrier? Yeah, we'll, he's, that was we'll a, see what the price was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 point. It's, it's, it's very interesting. So, Trump announced that the Carrier plant is keeping jobs in the U.S. And yeah, very good point. Let's see what the price That's was. That's Trump on the phone himself, but, by the way. You know, I think maybe I was talking to Phil Griffin. He said it was fascinating that he talked to, uh, he was watching an interview of a guy and from Mike, the Carrier Mike plant. Pence. He said, I voted for Donald Trump. Why? He said, because he said he was going to keep my job. If he does, I'll vote for him again. If he doesn't, right. I'll vote for somebody else. That's basically it. Stand up. Pence, there's a lot of Pence in this yeah, also as absolutely. well. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. You have Governor Mike Pence, the governor of Indiana, who helped wire this deal. A thousand jobs. Trump's going to appear there tomorrow. Carrier confirmed. A thousand jobs staying that otherwise would have gone to Mexico. Symbolic. That's a win. I mean, yeah. that's, that, that's a win. But the Worth question is, as Nick says, do you set now this precedent of, I'm going to bring these jobs back to the people in Rust Belt states? Are you because you can't bring them all back. It's just not happening. It's not the way the economy works. So instead of saying, I'm going to bring all 2,000 of the factory jobs back or get 1,000 of them back, you also have to have something else you can say, which is what Tim Ryan's trying to say in this fight against Nancy Pelosi, which is that we can build a new economy in these places. There will be jobs. They may just not be the jobs that were here for the last two generations. Howard, what about that, that fight right now? Not a fight, but a challenge, a leadership challenge. Nancy so, Pelosi and Tim Ryan, a guy from the heart of this region that we're all talking about the upper Midwest, Tim Ryan. This actually ties in with what we were talking about earlier with the new generation. Our party, and I think the country as a whole, we, the baby boomers got to get out of the way. I mean, this yeah. is my generation. I'm happy to advise. I don't think that we need to be in the forefront anymore. I love Nancy Pelosi. She's, in my view, been the most effective speaker since Tip O'Neill. Um, and she's going to win this because she's done, she's just going to win it. I mean, she's raised money. And she's, but we need somebody for the next generation 
um, to be in charge of everything, not just in the Democratic side, but the Republican can side, I, can I, to, to empower this very generation that we were talking about, that I David agree. Brooks wrote about. But, but let me ask you this, Howard, and I, I know Nancy, and I've worked with her, I love her, I, I, I have absolutely no problem telling my Republican friends all along, she's, she's great. We worked she's on, very effective. on China issues together, right. she was a great speaker, a powerful speaker, and knew how to control an unwieldy Congress. But yet, if you just look at the numbers, if you just look at the performance, Democrats were, uh, were riding high in 2008. From 2010 to 2016, they lost over 60, 65 seats. They're at a, a lower standing now, despite the explosion in 2008 of, of Democratic seats than they were since 1928. What is the justification for her? What does she say to the caucus? I know that I've lost 68, 69 seats since I've been your speaker, but vote for me anyway. Um, you can, I mean, that's what Tim Ryan's campaign is going to be about, but the truth is she knows every member. She's raised money for every member. She knows the process better than anybody else, and she's going to win this. Um, but it, it is time for our generation to step back and teach what we can to the younger generation, put them in the seats of power. What about geographically? Really quickly, they keep telling me i got to go to break, but geographically, what does it mean, the difference between having a speaker from Youngstown and a speaker yeah. from San Francisco. I think that's a very big, a very good point, and that is the kind of thing that Democrats Down are going to have to do. We are going to have to figure out a way to represent those states uh, in the way we used to represent those states if we're going to come back. Totally. I agree. think we're going to talk about it more later, but President Obama gave an interview to Rolling Stone published last night where he says almost exactly what you're saying yeah. right now, which is that we've got to kind of get out of the way, and get into the grassroots, and talk to Biden the people that elected right. Donald and, and, Oh, yeah. Again, Joe Biden. When we were at that bar, Came, yep. came, on, yeah. came on the show in Philadelphia, yeah. and that bar, it wasn't just that bar. No, it was a great bar. What was the name <laughs> Remember when bar there was... In Philadelphia? Remember when that thing happened? Alex? McGillens. McGillens, it was a great bar. Yeah. So anyway, it was a great bar. Uh, a great bar. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, um, the greatest bar ever. It was huge, okay? Okay, there was a rapid, okay? No. Um, it pretty so, well. <laughs> so anyway, but Joe Biden and McGillens said, yeah. uh, back in uh, July, we have lost working class white voters. We have to do a Set better job the election, he, to get them yeah, back. New. All right, Howard Dean, thank you. Thank you. Huge. Still ahead, thank Donald you, Trump's Howard. campaign <laughs> pledge to bring back waterboarding is facing plenty of backlash inside the CIA. Can you back off of that? The you agency's will. former director, Michael no? Hayden, famously said you the will. president's going to need to bring his own bucket. Did, did, he, yeah. did he Did he? back off of that when he was talking about Mattis, Mattis talked him Mattis, and Mattis talked him out of it. Right, Mattis is talking him General Hayden out of it. joins the table next on Morning yes, Show. Right. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.